resolve the tension between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Obama in the recent weeks and months. Is it fair to say that there is not a massive celebration happening at the White House this morning with this news? Allison, we want to congratulate the Israeli people for the democratic process for the election uh, that they just engaged in with all the parties that engage in that election. As you know now, the hard work of coalition building begins. Sometimes that takes a couple of weeks. And we're going to give space uh, to the formation of that coalition government. And we're not going to weigh in one way or another. Really? Well, that took 24 hours because Josh Earnest has been weighing in left and right, uh, saying they're going to revisit their whole policy on Israel and the Palestinians and consider going to the UN and allowing the UN to vote on a state. And uh, today they actually said they didn't believe uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who walked back that no two-state solution comment. And, and they also criticized uh, him for running the campaign the way he did, saying it was divisive towards Arabs. But why? How they change uh, their philosophy very shortly. And right, welcoming in now Noah Rothman, associate editor at hotair.com. Hey, Noah. Hi, how are you doing, Steve? Boy, they couldn't wait. The hatred for this administra- from this administration towards Israel is just uh, too much for them to hold in. Yeah, uh, this is uh, really, really damaging, very petulant, very childish. Uh, what we've been hearing over the last uh, 24 hours, and it seems like it's actual legitimate administration policy, is that they are no longer going to be shielding Israel from the wrath of the United Nations Security Council. Uh, they're warming to the idea of allowing a UNSC resolution that would compel the restart of the peace process under unfavorable conditions. They're uh, using Netanyahu's uh, comments about not wanting to engage in a, in a two-state solution now under the prevailing conditions in Gaza and the West Bank as a suggestion that he wholly rejects the peace process entirely and as such is an irresponsible actor. And this is presented as a good thing because the alternative is to present, uh, is to uh, back off uh, objection to the Palestinians who are, who are going to be, uh, become members of the International Criminal Court and we'll be recommending that uh, Israeli officials are sent to the court, uh, to the Hague for war crimes and that uh, the, the administration is being merciful by not, uh, by not uh, uh, assenting to giving them a, a war crimes recommendation. So it's really brinksmanship that is, uh, is just shocking at this point. And very, very childish. And, 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 and Noah, what makes it worse, in, in my view, worse than petulance and childish, childishness and all, childishness and all that, is, is, is that this is happening not in a vacuum, but at the same time, that they are about to sign an agreement with Iran, Iran who are killing American soldiers as we speak, who have killed Americans, who are taking over the Middle East, who dethroned uh, and took over Yemen, and who uh, attack Israel through their Hezbollah surrogates, and, and we're, we're going to reward them by t- taking away the sanctions on them, and possibly at the same time sanctioning Israel. This is insanity, but I, it's worse than insanity. I think it speaks to exactly where Obama's sympathies lie. It's absolute madness, and it's very dangerous foreign policy because these all all these international actors get a vote. The United States doesn't act with impunity. Israel has maintained and has taken care of its own security for decades. Uh, Israel was uh, was asked very kindly by uh, the Johnson administration not to engage in preemptive attacks on Egypt in 1967, and they humbly declined the opportunity to listen to LBJ. They are not above doing the same thing to Obama in 2015. Uh, moreover, the, uh, the Israelis are, are beginning to form a, a, something of an alliance with the, the Sunni powers in, uh, in the Middle East, Egypt and Saudi Arabia, which are very leery of increasing Iranian influence over the places you mentioned, Yemen, Iraq, Lebanon, Syria. Uh, they're, they're finding that they have their own allies in the region that are also not aligned necessarily with the interests of Washington. So we're losing control over the Middle East all over hurt feelings, essentially. Well, I think, yeah, and, and I think preconceived uh, beliefs and, and hatreds on the part of Barack Obama. But uh, let's move on very quickly here to um, uh, the, um, the Hillary uh, email scandal, a piece you had posted, uh, another piece you had one on Obama preparing to punish Israel at hot air, and also on the Hillary support is starting to squirm. Um, we've seen some polls where uh, there's been movement away from Hillary. Yeah, a little bit. It depends on the poll you look at. Um, Democrats uh, appear to be getting a little bit nervous about their nominee's readiness to really hit the ground running in 2016 when she announces a candidacy. 
the media has been pushing these stories about the scandals involving her email account and the Clinton Foundation's really suspect uh, and unethical uh, fundraising practices while Hillary Clinton served as Secretary of State. And good for the press, um, but Hillary Clinton herself has been successfully stonewalling the media, not not getting any uh, any of this air cleared, and she's been able to navigate around the press. And at some point, she's going to have to answer for these things herself. And if it's not going to be the media that makes her do it, it's going to be a Republican. Uh, and I think Democrats are smart. Those Democrats who are aware of this are smart, but these are all vulnerabilities, and they have the, the potential to really undermine her candidacy when it gets going. Yep. All yep. right. Very quickly, right. we got 30 seconds. MSNBC executives saying we're boring, right? And they're going to make changes. Yeah, I mean, good for them. Uh, Steve, you know better than, than most that this is the entertainment business. And if you're predictable, you're not entertaining. Uh, this is it's as much news as it is talk. And you really have to be a, an entertainer and, and a compelling uh, a person who can who can guide an audience. Uh, in order to succeed. And, and Noah, business. I will say on that note, as we have to say goodbye, Al Sharpton, for everything he is, he's entertaining. And not in a good sense for MSNBC, though. Thank you, Noah. Noah Rothman at hotair.com. Hey, folks, up next, the author of Resilience, Eric Greitens, will be here. Uh, but first, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was the leader of the civil rights movement, as you know, in the 60s. And he fa his famous words helped move the country closer to achieving equal rights for all races. Let's take a look at this influential American's life with this hour's American moment. January 15, 1929, was a chilly day in Atlanta, Georgia, when a family gathered to welcome into this world a new life, and with it, a new hope for America. Two years after his birth, his father Michael King changed his name to Martin Luther King, and then changed his son's name to Martin Luther King Jr. Throughout his 39 years, he instilled in Americans a new spirit of justice and freedom based on equality instead of status, and character instead of race. He waged a nonviolent war on racial segregation with appearances that radiated with an energy that transcended all races, all faiths, and people of all ages with words that still resonate today. I may not get that with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. He spoke to us of his dreams and his beliefs that justice too long delayed is justice denied. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.